Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today is a special day because it's the first time I test out my umbrella mic. <laughs> Uh, and today is also a special day because I have Dr. David Giltner with me. If you didn't know about Dr. Giltner's channel, he has founded Turning Science and he has a channel that talks about transitioning from academia to industry. And one of his top video is about why 90% of PhD students out there are not getting hired. Since I just got my first job one year ago, I think Dr. Giltner is more creditable speaking of why you are not hired and I'm here to interview him with my umbrella mic. That's a great mic. I, I like that. <laughs> Just a recap to my audience in case they haven't seen your video. I'll put the original there. Yeah, sounds good. So what I do is I help scientists transition into the private sector. And one of the topics is why is it hard to get hired? Why do industry managers, many of them, get turned off by PhD scientists? You know, what is the disconnect there? And I find there are really three big reasons. It came from a conversation I had with a manager who had been an executive at a tech company for about 20 20 years. And he said that, you know, 90% of PhDs are worthless is the word he used. And there are three reasons. One, they think they're smarter than everybody else. They always have to be the smartest one in the room. Two, they always find fault with other people's ideas. And three, they can't make a decision. He'll be looking for a recommendation from them and the response is always, I don't know enough yet, I need to do more analysis, collect more data, I can't make a decision. And he says these are things that they work well in a research environment, they do not work well in the private sector. And that, if there were any three things that you correct to get better hired, to interview better and do better in the private sector, it's those three. So, Davis, first of all, I do resonate with that a lot. As a post-academic, I'm a medical writer and making sure I deliver on time with my paper and writing. Uh, making sure I'm not a professionist is a struggle from time to time. So do you have practical suggestion on how to work on these three things that we can take away? Yeah, absolutely I do. So the, you know, the, the always feeling you have to be the smartest in the room is certainly one I still struggle with some because we're trained to do that, right? Mm -hmm. I like to take the approach that I can learn something from everyone else on the team. Mm -hmm. And when you move into the private sector, you'll be working with people with very different backgrounds, very different training. and realizing you don't have to be the smartest in the room that yes you have your own expertise but other people have a lot they could teach you as well can be really uh, freeing and it yeah. can be very exciting to learn from people who uh, even if they don't have a lot of education might have lots of experience and things you really don't understand I do have a quote to share is if you are the smartest in the room you probably need to find a different room you're, <laughs> wrong, you're in the wrong room I think that's Ex a great way to think about it so that's one the other is making decisions that can be a tough one and and I still struggle with that. You mentioned perfectionism, yeah. right? You know, I think we, we tend to do that. We come from an environment where accuracy is paramount. Mm. In the private sector, sure, you have to be accurate at some point in many things, but it's more about moving fast, trying something and figuring out if it works or if it doesn't. And get developing a mentality where uh, you can make quick decisions is really mm. important. I like to say, if you're faced with two different options and you're trying to choose, rather than continuing to struggle and think about it and collect more data, just pick one and work to make that the right choice. I can also follow up with a quote like vegetarianism. People say it's better to have everyone do it imperfectly than to have a minority of people doing it perfectly. So I think a similar concept if we can show up every day to be B plus every day instead of one or two days A plus and then most of the day you're crushed and you can't recover. I think that's more sustainable, isn't it? That's excellent advice. You're exactly right. Perfection doesn't help. Just doing it regularly pretty well it works so much better and that is a lot of what the private sector is about. You improve it in time and you get good enough but yeah. perfection is not what people are looking for. Your second point was about finding fault with other people. That's an interesting one because that's actually part of the scientific method, right? Yeah. Somebody throws out a hypothesis right. and everyone jumps on it to try and disprove it and the longer it survives the better the hypothesis of the theory is, right? But again, it, industry is really looking for solutions and certainly, yes, absolutely, things have to be tested mm -hmm. and you want to figure out if they're right or not. But if you approach your teamwork as an attitude of how can we work together to find something that works, yeah. 
that's just a different approach. and absolutely, you want to weed out bad ideas. that still happens. but really thinking about how can we win together rather than how might you be wrong? i kind of touched on this topic. we like to over apologize in our daily situation. and i have a video about how not to say sorry. a lot of time, people don't need your sorry. they don't need your over negative analytical criticism. they just want you to get things right and get things meeting to the expectation for now and i think being solution minded, having a positive language is a really important skill. i'm still building that myself. it it is. and that's part of persuasion, which is yet another thing that is important in the private sector, right? yeah. yeah. okay. that's it for today. thank you very much for david initiating a lunch with me so that we can share more of his wisdom. glad we were able to do that. it was great to meet you here in paris. ah yeah glad the weather was good. and ah yeah. thank you very much. and yeah thanks his company for paying for my lunch today. thank you. happy to do it. great to meet you. if you guys haven't had enough of david's advice and his wisdom, make sure to check out his channel, turning science. i'll put the link down below. he has a lot of very relevant tips for you guys who are in the last stage of ph d. and i hope you will make sure to get the most out of this free resource. i think in the very beginning of ph d, you don't know what are the important keywords. and it's almost feeling like only the seasoned researcher would have figured this out. and you know what? this can be overcome by exploring the list that you already have. and you can train yourself to learn this keyword looking into different suggested paper. so i think this is a wonderful tool for new researcher. it's going to help you grow your reference list.